What's up? Welcome to this episode of Sunday Driver. Today we're out here with my good friend Hunter in his beautiful van. But before we talk about the van, let's talk about your last car. <laughs> what did you have before this car? Let's talk about that transition. Okay. Yeah, so I had a 2013 Camaro ZL1. Okay. I had it dynoed at 550 wheel horsepower. Okay. Um, that was, I had it for two years. I had a uh, V6 Camaro for four years beyond that, so it was like my ultimate dream car. Right. Had it, it was fun, uh, but once the once the pandemic hit, I had nowhere really to go, and if you have nowhere to go and you're working from home, right. 550 horsepower is not really needed. It doesn't do you that much good. No, it does not. So I still have it, it's for sale probably, it's gonna be going in the next week or two. There you go. Um, but it was it was fun while I had it, and obviously it was you know a great car. You know it's the the supercharged with the with the mag ride and whatnot. You know highly recommend that car. It's definitely a bargain for the performance. Right now at the price they're at, I think it's a crazy bargain yeah. for what you get. Yeah, right now they're selling for about thirty five thousand. Yeah, thirty five thousand for stock five hundred eighty horsepower. Yeah. I mean, it's pic pretty good. picture what new cars you're gonna get for 30 grand compared to that. I mean, yeah. that's that's a crazy deal. Yeah, I, I hung out with a bunch of guys that have like six gen, uh, you know, ZL, not ZL1, six gen SS's. Right. And they're they're rocking like, you know, 450 horsepower. And right. they like, <laughs> they get, you know, the, oh, I wish I had the power that you have. Right. And I'm like, well, you could have. You, know, <laughs> you, you could have you bought, bought it. <laughs> but at the same time with those new ones, they're so much lighter, the chassis are better. So it's a trade off. The, yeah. the fifth gen ZL1 is more of a, Definitely more of a muscle car, whereas yeah. the six gen is getting more of the sports car. They're nimbler. They they turn better. Totally. So, totally. But yeah, so I went from I went from that to something completely different. You know, my, my parents cracked up <laughs> when I uh, when I rolled this home. I kind of kept telling them that I was gonna do it. Yeah. You know, and then I rolled this back. You know, past them, and and my dad started laughing. He had one of these new in the seventies. I didn't know that. He did. He had a seventy three that his family had. What color like, was his? His was uh, beige. This was like a. a I think that one was the the ivory white, which is a, a more beige white, it's more of a tan. Got it. This one's, I believe, is the pearl white, so it's just stark white. So let's dive into this. Okay. Why this car? Um, so obviously, you know, being a car guy with the ZL1, like I love to take that to car shows and do everything. But in the same time, you know, with 2020, yeah, hashtag van life is more popular than ever right now. Sure. Um, so I wanted something that I could get into the game with that. But in the same time, if I just got a regular Sprinter van, if I got a Dodge conversion, if I got anything that was just a normal, typical conversion van, right, you can't take that to a car show. Something like well, a nineteen. You could, but I mean, you can in the right capacity. <laughs> in the right capacity, you can. But, but you pull up in this, and it's just like this. Exactly. <laughs> this thing has the the aesthetic of it is is everything. Right. Everyone's got a story about it, so they'll come up to you and talk to you about it, which is really really cool. Right. Um, you know, you sacrifice you sacrifice amenities and whatnot, but at the same time, you just have that classic Southern California style. Right. And that's part of the fun part about driving old cars. It's just like meeting and talking to people and everybody, everybody, especially the generation beyond us, like our parents, they all have stories about these cars and oh, my friend had one or oh, me and my friend smoked a ton of weed in these. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, I mean, that's that's the thing. And, and you're right, like every time you go to a gas station, right. someone pulls up next to you. Right. You get really excited if another bus or another, like even a Volkswagen bug pulls up next to you because they'll have stories and they'll talk about theirs with you. And, you know, the Camaro was cool, but only car guys actually kind of resonated with it. Right, right. Um, you know, for, for all, all purposes, you know, a ZL1 looks like a V6. So to a non-car right. person, it's just a, a rental car right um you know it wasn't but and again like part of it, it, car ownership shouldn't be about just trying to impress others but there is that uh, you know the, it's an added bonus it's an added bonus <laughs> and then of course the sparking up a conversation when someone actually knows what your car is is always is always a pleasure so right so yeah this is a 1974 volkswagen westfalia um, so Okay, so there's the Westfalias, and then what, there's the regular people carriers? It's just the two different versions? So, Volkswagen back in the 70s made these, I mean just Volkswagen buses. These ones are particularly the bay window. Okay. So they have this, the 50s and the 60s versions, those are the iconic hippie bus with the split window. This one's the bay window, bay window is just the solid panel up in the front. Right. Um, they, essentially they made it, it's called a, a, a transporter, it's just a typical bus. Volkswagen would source it, they'd give it to a company, uh, in this case it was Westfalia, which was a company in Germany. So they're like a third party that would do all the kind of interior exactly. modifications to it. So they did Got all it. the engineering, the layouts of everything, 
they put in all the you know they put in all the cabinetry of course they put in the iconic pop top of course um, which is really the, the the best thing about this car right the coup de gras um, really it's, it is. <laughs> and they do actually have versions without the pop tops they do have regular campers that are just like this oh interesting and they call those t i mean any bus that doesn't have a pop top is called the tin top okay um i mean so you really got to do it though you, if you're doing if you're doing a westfalia <laughs> with a camper you really got to get the pop top it's it's definitely when you get into a parking lot or a campsite or anything like that if i go to a car show right the moment i pop the top is when the people start asking questions and, <laughs> totally did you did you convert that did you do that yourself like, right no, that's that's how they did it in the 70s right so and it's just iconic so i mean the cool thing about it being 74 is it's pre-smog exactly so that's definitely a nice bonus yeah especially out here in california yeah definitely <laughs> there's a tricky thing so with the pop top they started the pop top with the actual bed upstairs I right call it upstairs in 74. okay before that the older models they just they pop up the other way and they actually just have headroom right uh, you would have a child cop but it's rated for like 140 pounds you would never actually want to be up there right. as an adult got it and kind of the novelty with it you got a pop top you want to be able to sleep up there so 74 was the first year that they switched that up and actually have a bed which is really nice but in california anything after 76 or including 76 has to be smogged right so i had a two-year window for the ideal Volkswagen bus that I wanted and that was either a 74 or a 75. You nailed it man. Yep. So they came in this blue green and then like an orange right? They came in a blue green yes yeah. so the 74 was the first year they came out with the plaid. Right. As they went on all the way until 79 that was the last time they made the bay window then okay. they switched to the van again. Right. Uh, they did have special edition ones that had different plaids and I'm not the best on these ones but yeah blue plaid was really common if you ever see an orange bus typically right. an orange bus is completely orange inside orange on orange, orange on orange <laughs> it looks like a creamsicle rolling down the yeah, road yeah totally um orange orange uh yeah orange plaid they have some other ones there's some yellow buses that have a yellow and green which is really really cool I like those yellow on yellow <laughs> um yeah but I mean it has a little bit of green it, it looks very looks very like 70s camper kind of style yeah. so the orange is like too much orange again yeah. it's all personal preference but no the blue this is you know what it would look like right originally in the 70s i love it dude yeah has cool. it been reupholstered or is this the it original was, it was reupholstered right it looks really clean yeah i mean after it's a 47 year old car i would hope at some point it would have been reupholstered. Right. <laughs> so walk old. me through some of the wacky weird stuff that they did in here i mean there's all kinds of cool stuff like little <laughs> pop-up tables yeah. everywhere yeah, and definitely. Then, what so the pop up there. This originally, we'll move this Sorry. guy. <laughs> Go uh, ahead. All, all good. Um, this originally, and, and that's the one thing that's not OG on this car, is it would have had a stove here in this compartment. Oh, okay. It's kind of messy right now, but I just use it for all my, my, you know, my storage stuff, my plates, my cups, and everything, my silverware. Yeah. It would have had a stove in here that would have connected um, to a propane tank that's mounted down here. Okay. Um, and then there would have been an ice box in this cabinet here so wait check people would out. cook right here cook right in here yeah it seems like a bit of a fire hazard it to kind me. of is i mean that's why there is a fire extinguisher right here these things are a fire hazard regardless oh of the propane gosh. or not okay so um, sorry what's down here this i mean it just got converted to storage but it would have had an old ice box oh so okay they used to have one i there was two different kinds i don't remember which one this would have had um, there's one that's like a regular compressor type that runs off propane that okay. would have gone in there and then another version some of them have is just like an ice tray okay. so it's just literally a cooler that has a tray that you would put ice on got it and it would actually have a drain so that the as the ice melted it would still drain out the bottom of the van but it would keep the whole thing cool oh that's pretty um, sweet and so again you know it, those things didn't really work too well anyways even when they were new right right um <laughs> I, there i have found thoughts like i found one that goes into like peterbilt trucks and whatnot just like a trucker fridge right um i did find one the other day for like 600 bucks that fits perfectly in this spot so i kind of have to decide might be worth it i have to decide if i want a fridge the right. added storage right now the previous owner just built out like they just took you know just made it into into right drawers which pretty is clean really really nice yeah like you can put a ton of stuff in here right and that is the thing like you know with one of these like you're rolling down the road you don't want a lot of loot stuff everywhere and you right. don't want a bunch of bags like we're we're getting better with the amount of bags we take to our camp right and stuff so well and the thing about this out. too is like the point of the van like this is so you can go out and do adventures and stuff and you want to you know take stuff with you so yep. having added storage pace is definitely a plus because even though it's a van like let's look at it from the front like this is probably 
as narrow as my MX-5, yep. you know? <laughs> it's, yeah. not, it's not a big vehicle that you could fit a ton of stuff in. I can, uh, there's, there's a neighborhood around where I live that actually has, it's on a golf course. And right. It has speed bumps, and the speed bumps have built-in channels for the golf, uh, the carts to go through. Oh my where gosh. there's not a speed bump. <laughs> and this thing can almost just, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't get completely through, but you can just barely get through the channels <laughs> where you barely go over the humps. Yeah. Whereas like any modern car, you're, there's no chance you're going to follow yeah. the, the wheelbase of a, of a, or excuse me, like the width of a golf cart. So it's basically barely wider than a golf cart. Pretty much. That's hilarious. Much. Especially if you had the original tires. The original tires are like this one. Right. Like they're like bike tires. So what about the sink? How does that work? The sink, I don't have water in it right now. Um, but the sink just works off an auxiliary pump that's just underneath it. There's actually a tank right here. I accidentally ran it yesterday in the Vaughn, in a Vaughn's shopping center. I went to wash my hands and didn't realize that I didn't turn it off. Oh no. And so there was a waterfall coming through the parking lot. Oh no. I emptied my tank. I haven't had a chance to do it. But yeah, tank, I don't know how many gallons, maybe five, ten gallons. Right. Um, fills, you know, a lot of water. It just trickles out of that sink there. Again, an auxiliary pump that runs off an auxiliary battery. It's up in the back. Right. It's nice. We don't really wash dishes in it too much unless you have to. Right. It's just nice to always have something to wash your hands with. Yeah, for uh, sure. Because, I mean, you're, whenever you're using it, you're out at the beach or you're out doing a hike or whatever, you know? Exactly. So, really, really cool. This guy pulls out into a bed. Uh, there's a bunch of storage underneath it. I got all, like, my, you know, jumper cables. Right, right. Uh, tire, tire uh, you know, uh, compressor and everything like that. So, more of that. And then we just have more storage down here. But, yeah, like I said, this thing pulls out to a bed. So, essentially, essentially you, uh, <laughs> you can make a... Um, you know, you can make basically a bunk bed on wheels. Right. Which is really, really nice. So in a pinch, you could sleep two there. Yep. And two up there. Yep. So this could be sleeping four. Exactly. Four adults <laughs> and something that fits in a parking space. I love so, it. Yeah. It's, it would it's, be a pinch, but you could do it. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. It would definitely be a little, it'd be a little cramped, but yeah, you could right. definitely get away with it. Should we check out the engine bay? Sure. So you came from 550 supercharged V8 horsepowers. To how many here? Uh, I think this came out in the 70s with, with this version. I think they said it rated at like 68, maybe. There we go. I think the fuel injected ones that came in later were right. 72. Um, obviously, a lot of horses have left the stable <laughs> in the past 50 years. So, I don't know, like maybe 50, 60, maybe. Right. Um, it's definitely not fast in any capacity. It's a four speed. Um, there's been a couple of times where I've gone through some San Diego hills where I've actually almost stalled it. Uh, in first gear, right? It was a little scary, <laughs> um, but no, that's the kind of the charm of it. Like the charm of it is, you're never gonna get anywhere fast, um, and it kind of, you know, helicopter. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you don't get anywhere <laughs> fast, um, and so it's just kind of like the charm of it. Go along with the ride. It's also never a guarantee that you're gonna get to where you're trying to go. Um, <laughs> that's which part is, of it. Yeah, it kind of actually adds on to the adventure. I always tell my girlfriend. Anytime we're getting the van, you know, you spend two hours loading it up. You have all the best intentions and the campgrounds reserved, but there's always a chance that every single time you get in this thing, there's a chance that you might not actually get there. And you, totally. have, to be, you have to be okay with that reality <laughs> that you might come home on a flatbed. And, and so far, you know, we've had it for six months and it hasn't done that yet. So, I mean, they're really just so simple. And even if stuff goes wrong, like you can go and buy a new engine for like two grand exactly you know which is the nice part yeah so if you keep up with them they're not like insanely hard to keep going and on the road yeah but this one's the type 4 engine the type 4 is a little bit harder to find parts for okay uh, the type 1 72 maybe 73 type uh, 4 is that the later van motor that's this guy so it's the more boxy one the type 1 is the one you see in all the bugs okay it's all it. the bugs and early buses split windows um and you know the early bay windows got the it. later bays switch to the type 4 type 4 obviously has more power um it's more of a more of a quote modern uh you know kind of technology but at the same time they weren't as readily available as you know the 25 years that the type one was around for. got it and yeah so when it comes to finding parts these are a little bit harder to find a little bit more expensive right um so a lot of people actually if the type four ever dies on them they'll go to an upright conversion which is a got type it. one and that's with the upright heat shield the classic one that you see in the back of bugs that are driving everywhere got it so and you said that they came twin carb right it would have been twin carved. Uh, previous owner switched this to a dual carb. Okay. Um, Are you mean a single? 
A single, excuse me. Right. Yeah, single. And so the reason reason being is just it's so much easier to, to, to actually balance or you know just to, to tune. Right. With the uh, with the twin carb, you have two different basically you know like things that you have to kind of tweak. And then obviously just to get the jetting and everything right, you really have to kind of know what you're doing. Obviously, people who know what they're doing, it's easy. But someone like me, like this is my first carbureted car. Right. right. Um, and so you know simplicity is definitely, especially in something like this, is 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 appreciated so that's why the previous previous owner did that so right pretty neat so we were talking today about how he went online and discovered kind of the previous owners and what they had done with this car this thing has been around dude this thing has it been has. on tons of adventures it has. which i mean for me that makes it like even cooler yeah so that you're it, you're like continuing that story for pretty, this car yeah pretty much i mean someone had it in 2014 and they they owned it for two years it looks like and there's pictures of this thing, you know, on the 101, um, Yosemite Valley, uh, Grand Tetons. I lived in Colorado for a bit, so it's been up, you know, 10,000 feet up those roads. So right. I kind of know that if it, <laughs> if, if it can handle Colorado and the Rockies right. and get up those mountains, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that, you know, the San Diego local mountains, it does It'll just It'll be fine. okay, it, it, yeah. I've taken it up there, it does honestly just fine. Again, you, <laughs> you gotta have to give it its time and, and right. you know, let it breathe when it needs to, but for the most part, it. It gets the job done yeah it'll go the pace that it goes but it'll get there exactly so <laughs> yeah it's been it's been it's been fun and you know having six months of you know i bought it in august of 2020 so you can imagine the the van life the van life trend that's going on right you know that was definitely the main contributor to it but i mean i hope this is something that i'm going to keep on to a long time just because totally you know it's such a it's such a fun vehicle it just it brings everyone smiles it, it's so unassuming the the Z01, you know, it was all about kind of aggression and ego. Yeah. Um, and and it's, every, it's big and it's, and it's heavy and, and, and it's mean. And it's loud mean. and, and yeah. it, that's fun and that's great and all, but in the same time, like this has nothing to prove and only right. places to go. This so. is, I feel like it's just so lighthearted and fun yep. by comparison, you it know? Has, it doesn't need to prove to anybody anything. It right. just wants to go on road trips. <laughs> like that's the best thing you can get out of a vehicle. So any plans for modification or it's it's just pretty awesome as is. I mean, really. it's pretty awesome as is. We're <laughs> trying to do a little bit of more interior decorating. I've let my girlfriend do do that or told her that that's her. So like that little basket over there with the tassels, like that's a new addition. So obviously like <laughs> it's very, very infancy stage of decorating it. Little yeah. Fake house plant we have over there. Love it. Um, maybe we'll get some comforters and whatnot. So that's that's in the works as far as like interior decorating just to make it a little look more trendy um again i'm not going to rip out anything like some people they'll take out the original plaid or they'll buy a bus that doesn't have it and then they'll right. redo all the interior and custom build it and it looks beautiful i really like just the original style yeah it's yeah. just i mean you could go and build a new interior but you really can't recreate this you know exactly <laughs> exactly and so then that's the thing like again like with something that's so complete um and original like yeah it's just it's it's a sin to, to, to change that. So there is times where I'm like, maybe, I, you know, I, if I bought another bus that had a blank interior, it would have been fun yeah. to build, especially in 2020 with nothing else to do. Right. Um, but you know what, I'm, I'm really happy with this. Everyone loves the plaid. It's, yeah. it's so cool looking and the, the front seats are really good looking too. I mean, it's too. just Camp Mobile. I yeah, mean, yeah. come on. And that, <laughs> that it does. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been good. As far as mechanical, uh, you know modifications I've always said and, and now I'm getting I'm backing up on this a little bit I've always said that if that original type 4 engine ever blows up on me right um, I've toyed with the big thing a lot of people do is they'll put in a 2 liter from a Subaru right um, and, and they sell conversion kits online you just have to have the, the custom mounting brackets and you drop in then you belly mount the radiator to the bottom right it has plenty of you know clearance for air and whatnot so a lot of people do that you'll double your horsepower right but then you're not air cooled that's the thing but there's two sides of it the other, the other side of it is you have more power so you can go more places and i feel like it won't change the character of it that much yeah. and especially from the outside it still looks the same it'll just be more usable yeah exactly. but it won't have that you know that air cooled kind of whistle and exhaust it sound exactly you know? it won't have that lawnmower <laughs> sound that, that, that is easily identified as yeah. a old volkswagen coming down the road so yeah. there's there's charm to it and i'm just going to enjoy it for for now while you know while i have it yeah and, and you're right like if we had if we had a more modern engine in this thing like we could pretty much take it anywhere and right and it would, you know, that, that uncertainty of getting to the places that you'd want to go right. would be, for the most part, removed. 
Right, you know, totally. For for better or for worse, again, that's part of the adventure and part of it's going slow in this thing. Well, I mean, part of the fun thing too with these is like, if something is to break and if you're out on the road, it's like half the stuff you can probably fix right there. Yeah. They're just so easy and simple. Yeah, no, you're not, you're not wrong. I know I've heard people doing, taking the springs out of their seats what? Dude, they had a valve spring go off on them. Oh my god! And they actually <laughs> took the coil out of their seat. And this is in the old 70s, you know, like the hippie days. Yeah. When these things were, oh, well, I guess even like the, you know, 80s, 90s, when these things got down to pennies. You would never want to do right. that nowadays since they've gone up so much. Um, but yeah, you could literally take, a, you know, a coil from your seat and put it and use it as a valve spring. Oh um, my god! Just gosh. to keep yourself home. There's been stories <laughs> I've heard of that, so. That's so wild. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. I mean, it doesn't get doesn't get too fast it goes about 65 you wouldn't really want to go faster than that anyways so yeah even if you had a nice modern Subaru engine in it yeah you know you we wouldn't really want to take it any faster just because of the brakes and the, and the chassis dynamics and everything you'd probably roll off the road <laughs> um, so I guess oh, there's still some charm in that show me your wheel cover oh, I mean yeah. it really completes the look yeah <laughs> it's pretty cliche but I mean you got to do it yeah we threw it on for Halloween yeah we were pretty cliche but we were hippies for halloween yep um the girlfriend and my and myself and we bought this amazon or something and and you know we've it's been a couple months now and we haven't taken it off so we it's were like going to just do like a white one or something but this has so much more charm people give us peace signs all the time it's like right. your mustache you know it was just going to be there for a while exactly. but here we are yeah that's been a quarantine <laughs> thing as well I, starts starts ironically and before you know it it sticks around it's just part of you at a certain exactly. point <laughs> What are exactly. these? What are these plugs for? Those ones would have been fog lights. Oh, okay. I have the fog lights are actually in the in the dash up front. Um, just clip in, and then you just have additional fogs or additional lights on the bottom. I haven't taken the wiring out, and I haven't even used them yet. But the previous owner used to. I so love it, dude. I'll, I'll put it in at some point. Should we go for a little drive? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, Hannah, we'll be back. Yeah, you want to slam, slam it? Slam it. Old German cars. There we go. I hope that that clutch is showing up down below. Just how, because it's floor mounted and it like curves forward. What's that? The the way the clutch oh. is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Is that in gear? Yeah, here. Keep clutching. Just play with all the gears. So do first, get to neutral. Yeah, first, second. <laughs> yeah, go to third. I don't know. Maybe third? third? Yep, and then fourth. <laughs> the fourth speed. That's it. It's so like it's so, yeah, you can move it like a foot right, in gear. Coming off. Okay. <laughs> and we're rolling. <laughs> I must say this feels unlike anything I've ever driven before. Right. <laughs> Just the seating position, I'm completely upright and it's like the steering wheel is in my lap. Yep. You're driving a bus. Compared to my cars, my feet are out like way in front of me yep. and I'm all lean back. This yep. is like the complete opposite How's of this mirror for you. Uh, a little bit a little bit that way. You want There you go. <laughs> There's the gang. <laughs> Let's tap into this raw torque. Whoa! <laughs> All right, I think that's there. There, oh, there we oh, go. Oh snap! <laughs> Five hundred fifty horsepower to like sixty. Oh my okay. gosh! It's such a crack up. Um, and this thing, it's always questionable, but it's also it has old brakes. You don't want to slam right. the brakes. I don't want to slam. So you're kind of just yeah. You're, you're kind of stuck. I don't want to slam on the gas or the brakes. I just want to coast it. <laughs> Get it to a good speed and just keep it there. Exactly. With with lights, same same deal. Like you actually want to go slower coming approaching the light. Yeah. Because you want to just keep your momentum. Yeah. So I always yeah. Hope you know, that it turns green by the time you get by there. By the time you roll it, exactly. <laughs> it's funny how much it like picks up, and then as soon as you go off the gas, it like drops yeah. down. Yeah. You should give them a little tap tap on your on your horn. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap today. Thank you all for watching and thank you to Hunter for having us out and showing his beloved van. We have more coming up, so make sure you stay tuned. We'll see you next time.